All right, everybody, welcome to the second Full Stack Academy Grace Hopper program live stream of our demo day projects. I'm really excited to bring cameras and people from all around the country today to show off what they've been working on for the last two and a half weeks. I think it's gonna be an exciting couple of hours of looking at really some of the cutting edge stuff that some of the most cutting edge stuff we've ever seen at Full Stack. Uh, we have VR, AR, data science, um, a, lot of, a lot of cool things that, um, that we'll be seeing in the next few hours. I'm here right now with um, my co-founder and longtime friend, Nimit Maru, and one of our instructors, Kate Humphrey. Kate has led the remote program for the last um, 13 weeks. All right, and uh, just give you a quick overview of our agenda today. We're gonna first start with a project from our remote campus. Um, this is the data science project that I was mentioning. Then we'll move to New York and have a, uh, New York has nine teams demonstrating their projects, followed by the New York City Grace Hopper program. There'll be five teams demonstrating their projects. And finally, we'll wrap up last but not least with our Chicago team who is broadcasting in from um, beautiful 1871 in Chicago and we'll be showing three projects there. All right, so without further ado, let's get started with our remote demo day project. Um, and Kate, why don't you introduce us and kick it off? Thanks, David. Um, as he mentioned, I am Kate Humphrey. I'm the instructor for the remote cohort right now. And this is the same immersive curricula as all of our other groups, but our students come from all over the country. And the remote team we will be welcoming today is Data Lab. And I'm very excited to have them kick off our demo day. Their project combines creativity and business, and it caters to the technical needs of developers while giving an intuitive UI for non-technical users. I'll hand it over to Data Lab to further describe their project and the technical challenges they faced. All right, thanks, Kate. Are we good to go? Great. Hi, I'm Mandy Meidlinger, and we want to welcome everyone to Full Stack Academy's Demo Day. My team members are Bruce Gruget, Andrew Hookham, and Sarah Almagheri. We are excited to introduce you to Data Lab. Data Lab lets any employee reach across all the databases within an organization, slice that data to get the best insights, and then share the resulting real-time D3 visualizations with collaborators and decision makers. Here is Data Lab in action. Kate works for a company that just launched a new product. She is using Data Lab to keep track of their product's launch with various metrics, all in real time. Sales figures, Twitter mentions, and inventory levels. So how did we create Data Lab? We decided to create a desktop application versus a web-based app. This means that businesses can use Data Lab with their local databases rather than host their sensitive data on a cloud. We used Electron to create the desktop application because it allowed us to make a native app, but with web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React, and Redux. And why use D3? Besides being beautiful and interactive, D3 has two advantages. First, D3 is customizable. D3 lets you visualize any biz business insight you may need. Secondly, D3 is executable JavaScript code, which means your visualizations can update in real time. And now Bruce will walk you through the user journey. Thanks, Mandy. As you can see, a user just now downloaded Data Lab and is opening it on her desktop. First of all, she will log in. We use Auth0 to handle the authentication. Using secure logins lets businesses better control their data by providing different access levels for each user. Auth0 also allows social authentication through Facebook, Google, or any OAuth provider. After logging in, Kate goes to SQL Lab to get information from her company's database. After selecting from a list of available databases on the local network, she will see current tables and columns. To then filter the data, Kate enters a SQL query and sees the results. Once she has the slice of data she wants, she saves it and is directed to the Explorer. The Explorer page is home to our D3 chart creation tools. Since D3 has a steep learning curve, we need to find a way for non-D3 users to make charts without writing a single line of D3 code, but still let more advanced users customize their charts. To accomplish both goals, we offer two options, a control panel that allows the beginner D3 user to select basic options for their charts, but also a sandbox where advanced users can edit the D3 code directly. And now Andrew will take you behind the scenes of Data Lab. Thanks, Bruce. 
To combine user inputs from the control panel and sandbox, we wrap any custom D3 code a user enters in a function, which is then invoked using the settings from the control panel to generate a second function. This second function is invoked with data from the database as it comes in to keep the visualization updating in real time. So as you can see, Kate's dashboard is continually updating as her company's databases change. We see from sales data that their product launch was successful. But based on feedback from Twitter, some users may have concerns about the cost. And it looks like they need to quickly ship more product to certain stores. Let's step back behind the scenes. Everything you are seeing are components created with React. React is fast because it creates its own virtual DOM, which only updates changes to the DOM rather than re-rendering the entire DOM with every small change. To achieve that, React needs to have control over everything that should happen with the DOM. At first glance, this means React and D3 are not an inherently good fit. This is because while React is updating a node on the DOM, D3 may be trying to update the same node in a different way. We resolve this conflict by pointing D3 at a DOM impersonator called a faux DOM that it has control of. D3 nodes from this faux DOM can then be injected into React to render. And now, Sara will finish our journey through the app. Thanks, Andrew. So let's say that Kate is happy with the chart and ready to share her work. She can head to charts where she can do three things, delete a chart, share it, or download it. By using a Firebase database, we were able to remotely keep track of all user accounts. So when Kate shares a chart with Tom and Joe, they receive a notification on their desktops. Now Kate needs to make a presentation. She can export the chart as a totally non-proprietary SVG object, or PDF, to either include in her presentation or embed on a website. To summarize, Data Lab lets Kate convert her company's raw database into meaningful, real-time visualizations and share them letting her company stay agile in their decision making. We had a lot of fun making Data Lab and working together as a team. To download and start using Data Lab, go to datalabapp.com. Thanks. Wow, that was a very impressive. Well done, looked great, and seemed to work really well. I was... Um, blown away i think something that <clears throat> that's hard to accomplish in a um in the small time frame that we have to build this project is to actually really meet a real user's need and i and i think you know this team really accomplished that i think it's a it's a great um a great accomplishment in such a short time yeah that's one thing i i noticed too is that it it, it really seemed to be like a usable tool that i as someone who's like led business intelligence projects would have loved to have set up all right, congratulations, team. Way to kick us off really well. <laughs>